In this video, we'll cover horizontal alignment information that can be extracted from highway design plans. We'll take a look at an example and talk about how we can look at information for both the curves and the tangents of a highway design project. So this is an example of a plan sheet. This is one that we're going to extract information from. These can have lots of information or just be very specifically focused on horizontal curve or other elements. Uh, in this example, we do see lots of information, so it's somewhat of a busy image. And we'll talk about some of the information that we're going to extract from this. Some of the most important information in this example of a drawing is, is included in a curve table. So on this plan sheet, and again, the plan sheet, this represents a plan view. So we're looking at the project from above. There are two curves on this plan sheet, so we see a table that includes the core information for both of those curves. For this project, the nomenclature uses L to mean the main line of the roadway, the roadway that we're looking at for the center line of the project. We'll start at the beginning of the project. For this project, it's station 11 plus 50. And a key piece of information here that we also can see is the first bearing. So the first bearing as we start on this project the first tangent has a bearing of north, 26 degrees, 2 minutes, 56.1 seconds west. So looking through, and if we pull all the curve information together from each plan sheet, we'll see that we actually have five curves on this center line alignment. And we'll, we'll revisit these in a table further on, but we see several pieces of core information here. We have the PI station, we have the delta or the deflection angle, and this tells us whether the curve or the angle is moving to the left or to the right. We see the degree of curve denoted by D, which is related to the radius shown a couple spaces beneath it. We have the length of the curve, and then we have the tangent, which is the tangent distance between the PC and the PI. We also have the super elevation and the design speed in these curve tables. We also now moving to the end of the project have where the station ends. So the overall project has a final station of 51, but if we look closely, we can see that, that the PT of the final curve ends at station 51 plus 44.48. And that's going to be the end of the resurfacing and end of construction for this project. So we're going to take the information from those design plans, and this can range from several pages to 20 or 30 or 40 or more pages, depending on how long the project, how complex it is, and how much information is shared on each plan sheet. So the information we're going to, going to start with, we have two tables here, one for curve information and one for the tangent information. And so when I refer to the, the tangents and the tangent table, this is the tangent distance that's between the curves. So basically the distance from the PT of one curve to the PT P, to the PC of the following curve. So PT of preceding curve to PC of the following curve. So we're looking at just that straight straight distance between those curves, not on the curve and not the distance t between the PI and the PC or the PI and PT. So it's the, the straight line distance when we're talking about the tangents in the second table. So we'll have five curves as we saw from the previous curve table information from the plan sheets. And we're going to have five tangents along this project as well. We'll get the bearing information from the design plan. So we, we saw the beginning bearing at the beginning of the project. And so we can, can go through and track each of those bearings and add those into the table so that we'd find those directly from the design plans. The rest of the, uh, a lot of the rest of the information for the curve is actually given explicitly in those curve tables. So we have the delta or the degree or the uh, deflection angle. We have the radius we were given the tangent length, again, that tangent length is the distance from the PC to the PI, so that's the tangent within an individual curve. We have the length of curve L. 
we have the PI station. So those five columns were all given to us in those curve tables. Next, we can determine the PC with the information that was given in those curve tables. So to find the PC, we're going to start with the PI and subtract the T distance. So that's how we get the PC. So each of those PCs in for those five curves will be determined by PI minus T. And then we can also determine the PT. And the PT is going to be equal to the PC plus L. So the point of the station of the point of curvature plus the length of the curve will give us the PT. Moving on to the tangents, we can determine the length of those tangents by looking at the distance between PT of a preceding curve to the PC of the following curve. So that's the way we can determine the length of tangents. So with this information in these two tables, we could take this information and actually recreate the alignment with this information uh, that we've extracted from those design plans.